Asgard is dead. We need to stop her here and now. To prevent Ragnarok, the end of everything. This will be such fun. Mjolnir is one of the most well-known weapons of the Marvel Universe and is usually wielded by Thor. It is made out of Uru metal which is a special type of metal that can hold enchantments. Mjolnir was created by dwarves from Nidavellir. To create such a weapon, the dwarves needed the heat of a star to heat up the forge that was able to melt the Uru metal and shape it to the desired weapon. Despite how well built Mjolnir is, the legendary weapon has been destroyed or broken quite a few times and in this video we will be talking about 10 times that this has happened in the comics. For the purposes of this video, we will be focusing on just these 10 times it has been destroyed and they are in no particular order. Thor was on a quest to learn more about the past through questioning the Eye of Odin. This Eye had been cast into the Well of Mimir to gain the knowledge of Mimir who was one of the wisest Asgardians. Legend says that he sacrificed it to gain wisdom about the latest Ragnarok cycle. The Eye showed Thor nine remaining gods roaming around what was left of Asgard as they stumbled upon toy-like figures of those who had fallen, such as Odin, Loki, and a hammerless Thor. Modai and Magni, who were both sons of Thor, were walking around and came across their father's famous hammer Mjolnir. They came to the consensus that it was too dangerous to have around their new world. Together they threw it down to Midgard with such great velocity that when it hit the ground it changed the flow of water in the river known as the Rhine. Not only was the flow of water altered, but Mjolnir itself was transformed into gold due to the pressure from the impact. 
This time, Lady Thor was fighting Mangog, who was the physical manifestation of the hatred of billions of beings that Odin had killed in the past. During their battle, Mangog tried to convince her that she was fighting for no reason, and that she should even hate the gods. So by simply stepping aside, he could do what he did best and kill gods. She kept fighting Mangog, and to put an end to things, she tied Mjolnir to the chains that once bound the wolf Fenris, whispering, Fly true, my friend, fly like the mighty storm you are and threw the hammer, dragging Mangog into the sun, destroying the hammer. Witnessing this, Thor Odinson was furious about what she had done, and began to yell at her, letting her know that she had just killed herself. Jane, however, knew exactly what she had done, and knew that their time was limited before she turned back into her mortal state. Odinson kissed Jane as she turned mortal in his arms, and passed away. Thor found himself looking around for Loki's enchanted Norn stones. However, the god of mischief had a plan to stop him. Nearby, there was a greedy Norse artifact collector who had been manipulated by Loki, leading him to find Thor. He then used sleeping darts to knock out Thor and brought him back to his camp, tying him up hoping that he could pawn him off for some money. The hunter was then led to a temple that was holding the destroyer armor. Through Loki's powers, the collector's soul was transferred into the armor, bringing it to life. Just as the destroyer was possessed, Thor broke free and made his way to the temple to stop the man before he could get there, but he was too late. When Thor got to the temple, he noticed that the man was not moving, implying that his soul had already been transferred. Just as he discovered this, he was attacked by none other than the destroyer. He hurled his hammer just to come to the realization that when Odin had put the enchantment on Mjolnir, he had made it possible for the destroyer to lift as well. The destroyer began fighting him with his own weapon until Thor finally got his trusty hammer back after it was thrown at him. When he retrieved his hammer and was getting ready to fight off the destroyer, it was sliced in half from an energy blast. Despite not having his hammer, he was able to survive after the temple collapsed on the destroyer, restoring the hunter's soul to his body. While on Earth, Thor went to a science convention to display an android that Professor Zaxton and Thor's other identity, Dr. Don Blake, had invented. This identity was created by Odin to teach Thor humility. The invention had a short circuit, however, turning its indestructible skin into shrapnel. Thor took action, wrapping the android to Mjolnir and threw it high in the sky so nobody would get harmed. Professor Zaxton was thrilled about how strong the android was, and had a new idea that would make a device that would make carbon copies of whatever it was aimed at. He would need the help of Dr. Don Blake to make some minor adjustments, and after a lot of thought, he decided to help him out on the condition that he would be given the location of Jane Foster. Thor wanted to attack the professor, but knew that he couldn't attack a civilian unless it was for self-defense, so he chose not to change into Thor and to beat the information out of Zaxton. After a long night of working on this new machine, it was time for it to be put to the test. Zaxton went to a nearby alley to test it on cats. To his surprise, it had worked. Once the machine worked, the location of Jane was revealed to Blake. Finding out the location of Jane, Blake transformed into Thor to go rescue her. Immediately, the professor pointed the duplicate machine at Thor and copied him. To give his copy the upper hand, he gave it an extra hammer as well. Thor busted out of the building to have space to fight off the copied version of himself. The copy began to spin the two hammers and then threw them at Thor. He became confused that when he was hit by the two copies of Mjolnir, they were instantly destroyed and vanished, but he had felt nothing. He realized that the inscription on Mjolnir said that whoever should hold this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. He discovered that the copies were not worthy, so it didn't matter how many hammers they had, they stood no chance. Just a disclaimer that this one is more of a bonus round, as it is not truly Mjolnir that is being destroyed, but still Thor's hammer in this instance. In an alternate reality, on Earth 2149, there was a virus going around, turning everybody into zombies. Now with a world full of brain-hungry zombies, nobody was safe. The Silver Surfer turned up to be next on the menu for the starving zombies, as he fought off a fleet of heroes. Thor, becoming unworthy from cannibalism, could no longer lift Mjolnir, so he found his Walmart brand hammer, which was a pole with concrete attached to it. As the Silver Surfer was going by, Thor smashed his wannabe Mjolnir across the Surfer's head. To the Celestial Erishim, the planet Pangoria was classified as a failure. As one of the two Celestials that could judge the planet's civilization and decide the people's fate, Erishim appeared on Pangori with Exitar the Executioner, ready to destroy the planet. Thor knew that he would have to think outside of the box to defeat a Celestial in order to save the people. He decided to take down the Executioner in hopes of preventing any destruction. 
He then flew up to his foe's head with his trusty hammer and struck the Celestial as hard as he could, leaving only a small hole in his armor. Knowing how durable the Celestial was, he decided that he should enter the hole and attack its unprotected head to bring it down. To his surprise, the Celestial did not have a body-like structure on the inside. The only way to destroy Exitar was to channel the godly life force which granted all Asgardians immortality. As well, Thor reinforced Mjolnir by wrapping his legendary belt of power around it, which doubled his strength and could channel the energy needed to defeat the Celestial. With all his reinforcements, he hit the membrane of the Celestial, causing a violent explosion at the cost and destruction of his faithful weapon. When Thor and Loki were in their childhood, Odin decided to give Thor Mjolnir, and this only sent Loki into rebellion, which paved his path to become the god of mischief and to stir the pot for the rest of the gods. While looking back in time, Loki was able to find the mold from Mjolnir, and devised an evil plot to get back at the gods and become ruler over all. When Loki and his followers showed up to confront Thor, they had multiple hammers made out of the Mjolnir mold, but did not possess the enchantment that was placed on Thor's by Odin. One of Loki's followers, Ulik, who was a war-driven troll and Fenris the wolf, jumped down from their ship and struck Thor and his hammer, Mjolnir, which caused a big explosion that sent everyone flying back injured. In the midst of the explosion, Lady Sif lost her arm. This brought Thor to the breaking point and he went to destroy the two foes. Heimer the giant jumped in to stop Thor as all the hammers collided at once, causing an even larger explosion that destroyed the one true Mjolnir. At another time, Odin sent a scout named Lonecar to explore beyond the Nine Realms. Lonecar found Narcissus, a city of gods which seemed to be the polar opposite of Asgard, full of darkness. While exploring the planet, he was attacked by a dark god named Saron. Fortunately, Lonecar was one of Asgard's greatest warriors and he was able to slay Saron. Another dark god named Perichaeus let Lonecar go so that he could warn Odin about the war which was about to come to Asgard. The war began between the two with heavy casualties on both sides, though the Dark Gods came out on top. Odin was given the opportunity to join the Dark Gods so that his sons could live, but declined the offer and was willing to fight to the death. Thor threw his father a spear, giving him the motivation to push himself to defeat them. Odin then banished the Dark Gods to the furthest reaches of the universe. Later, while away from Asgard, Thor was told that the Dark Gods had escaped and were holding Odin as a prisoner. Thor arrived in Asgard to find that not only Odin, but Baldur and Sif were beaten and held captive. Perichaeus was then given the opportunity to go head to head with Thor. Perichaeus began by sending an energy blast at Thor, but it wasn't enough to hold back the God of Thunder. Thor threw Mjolnir at the Dark God, but it was simply sliced in two by his scythe. Loki, the God of Mischief, was back at it in an attempt to bring the downfall of his brother Thor this time by bringing back his grandfather Bor to New York with an enchanting spell that made Bor see everyone and everything as a demon, which put him on edge ready to cause mass destruction. When Thor arrived at the scene to stop the menace, he noticed that he was wearing Asgardian clothing and beckoned that he came in peace. This didn't stop Bor whatsoever as he began to charge at Thor. When the two collided, they were both astonished by the other's power. Thor realized that he was hit by the power of a god because no mortal could have survived such a hit. Bor thought that Thor had stolen the power of his son Odin, which only made him want to avenge his son even more. The two went back and forth, landing significant blows. When Bor was down, Thor threw his hammer at him, but was in awe when his hammer was stopped in its tracks by Bor. Thor eventually had enough and unleashed his full power and potential and struck Bor, bringing about the death of his ancestor along with the destruction of Mjolnir. The Silver Surfer was flying around when he felt a great deal of energy from a nearby marsh and stopped by to check it out. He stumbled upon a peculiar wand, but it didn't grant him any added abilities or powers, so he tossed it back on the ground where he had found it. When the wand hit the ground, the Molecule Man began to transform from the substance of the Earth. Molecule Man wanted to know who the Silver Surfer was because of the Surfer's energy that was detected when the Molecule Man was still within the wand. When the Silver Surfer talked about Galactus, that sparked the Molecule Man's interest and he wanted to hear his origin story. Upon learning of Galactus the World Eater, he now knew what he should do with his molecular powers. He was going to eat the planet. The Silver Surfer tried to stop him, but was imprisoned with rubble from the ground. 
The Silver Surfer's board began flying all over Manhattan to find the Fantastic Four, when a couple of the Avengers noticed the board and realized that the Fantastic Four were away at the time, so they decided to investigate it themselves. They followed the board back to the Silver Surfer and freed him. Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, Tigra, and the Silver Surfer made their way to stop Molecule Man. In response, he vaporized Thor's hammer, Captain America's shield, Iron Man's suit, and the Surfer's board.